Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about acute hepatitis B virus. Um, this is an infection which is brand new. We call Hep B acute when you just caught it, and the majority of people who just caught Hep B um, have a very good chance of clearing it. Uh, acute Hep B does not mean a bad attack of it or, or something like that. It means that you have just caught it and you are in that phase during the first six months where it may well clear. This is acute Hep B. Um, now, with acute Hep B, many patients don't have symptoms. So a lot of people catch Hep B and never know they have it. Now the majority of hepatitis B is caught by children and children often have no immune system and no reaction to the Hep B. So they go chronic, 90% um, of children will go to a chronic state of Hep B if they're under 2 years old. If they're under 10 years old, it's about half of them will go chronic. And most of these children don't have symptoms or signs of of any illness and so they become chronic carriers and simply don't know which is why testing for Hep B even if you have no symptoms is very very important now when you do have symptoms you're usually an adult over 10 years old and um, these symptoms are not necessarily that you have them all and it's very often that uh, you can still have none but the main symptoms of uh, acute hepatitis B are a slightly raised temperature, tiredness, you lose your appetite, you feel nauseous, you're going to vomit or you do vomit. There's a lot of pain, aching, strange sensations around the liver. You can feel the liver moving sometimes. Um, there's dark urine. Uh, light colored, clay colored, almost white poo. Your eye whites go yellow and your skin can go yellow. Your joints can ache. And these symptoms last for uh, from about two weeks to about six weeks in the acute phase. And we discover hepatitis uh, B acute, Hep B, with a blood test. And the uh, test is called H B C A B I G M. That is how you know if you have acute Hep B. You test positive for that enzyme, that liver marker, that Hep B marker. So this is the timeline over, say, 36 weeks. Um, that's this sort of six-month journey of acute Hep B. Uh, um, so if you, I don't know, um, have a blood transfusion with Hep B, cut yourself in a fight and catch Hep B, have a dodgy tattoo and catch Hep B, have a reused glass injection, catch Hep B, have some blood spill situation, boxing, contact sports, catch Hep B. Takes about three to four weeks for this to show up. It's called the hepatitis B surface antigen. That's the first marker that shows up. So if you're having a blood test four weeks after a risk, um, the surface antigen is visible. We all know that you've caught that B surface antigen. At around about six, seven weeks, the immune system spots this virus, starts to fight back. And then you develop anti-HBC and anti-HBC IgM. This is the marker that says that you're acute. It's only there for the first few months. Um, HbEAG turns up at about eight weeks as well. And then these two viral particles exist in the acute stage. And then the antibodies try to fight the virus off. Now, of my last 82 patients with acute hepatitis B, 80 of them cleared the virus. The two that went chronic, one uh, had a rare blood group and a heart issue, 
And the other one um, had HIV. So there are reasons why people go chronic. Um, and if you're a healthy adult, you've got to expect to clear. Don't do all this panic about, oh, you know, I'm going to die, I've got hep B. No. Just know that you will clear the virus. And uh, follow a simple regime for six months, and you will clear. That's the plan. Um, and then when you've cleared the virus, um, the HBEHE becomes anti HBE. Um, um, it seroconverts to an antibody. And then the HBSAG also seroconverts to uh, the antibody, anti HBS. And that's what happens is people just clear it at around about 36 weeks. After six months, the antibodies emerge. About four months, three months, you'll see the antibody to this part of the virus, HBEAG, emerge. After six months, the antibody to the surface antigen emerges. Now, there are one or two cases where a patient will remain IgM positive for a year or even longer. Um, but these are very, very rare, and usually because the person has some sort of immune system issues. They might be on chemotherapy, or, or, or they might have a rare blood group with some other problem. Very rare that that happens. Um, very often the IgM in children especially will go away, and then you know that the child is now chronic hep B carrier. Okay. Now, what to do when we are diagnosed acute and how to help our bodies get rid of and kill Hep B forever. Um, now, we can expect 97% of adults to clear. And it is, and even with children, um, we had nine, I think it was, under five-year-olds who all cleared their uh, a hep B, it was an acute hep B, but they all managed to clear. And it was because they were given very strict, good diets, they were um, made certain that we didn't fill them full of lots of medicines, we just left their bodies to clear. Um, it was interesting that this system worked. Now, the first thing you've got to do is if you've got hep B, get regular sleep. Um, I've noticed midwives often go chronic because they're not allowing their bodies good sleep. I had a scientist, he was always awake all night for some reason. He didn't show signs of clearing. <laughs> good sleep is when you get rid of viruses. Um, the last time you had a cold or a flu, think about it. You went to bed, you had a good sleep, the virus was gone. The liver kills viruses during sleep, so get good sleep. Simple. Um, avoid alcohol. Um, I've had patients, if they drink, it foxes the immune system so they don't clear. And also avoid antibiotics. I've had some patients, the doctor didn't work out what was wrong, gave them antibiotics and they didn't clear. Um, <coughs> the diet should be mild. When I had hepatitis, um, I was aware that I felt awful and I threw up and I went more yellow if I, because I was living on chips. I was a student. I was poor. I used to go to a fish and chip shop and ask for the leftover chips. But living on this stuff, the worst thing for acute hepatitis. Um, avoid fatty and fried foods. Avoid meat if you can. It's the hardest thing for the liver to digest, especially fatty meat, fried meat. I'm talking sausages, I'm talking burgers, processed meat. Keep drinking water. It flushes the virus out. A lot of people have night sweats when they're sleeping. That's the virus kind of coming out. So two liters of water a day. It's a godsend for you. But also emotionally, stay calm and confident. You know, I'm going to clear have that attitude. Um, about eight weeks after infection, many patients will have um, the ALT scores of 1,500 to 3,000. This is a, always a clear sign of an acute infection. 
Now don't panic. The alt and the uh, ast often go very high, but what they are is soldiers being mobilized to kill a virus. It's healthy, it's your immune system fighting back to clear the virus. So don't feel bad when you see that. I actually feel bad when I don't see that. Then I think, oh, this child hasn't created the outs. Their immune system's not going to kill the virus. When we worry is if the Billy Rubin direct and indirect go sky high. That's called fulminant acute hepatitis. And some people do die of acute hepatitis. I remember a lovely nurse, 70 years old, dying. Caught her hep B from um, surgery. Uh, I remember a four-year-old child dying. No one realised it was acute hep B until it was too late. But both had sky-high levels of bilirubin. Um, and that's when we worry. And it's very rare. One in 200 acutes have that level of bilirubin. And you develop a thing called form with acute hep B. Again, so never panic if you see high outs. Be happy. Wow, all of these soldiers are killing the virus. Good news. It's a good response. Um, and what are you doing when you're acute? You're waiting for a blood test that says anti-HBS. The antibodies have emerged and killed the virus. That's what you're waiting for. Um, sorry about that. Um, so stay calm and wait for the antibodies. Stay calm, wait for the E antibodies first, HB, EAB, and wait for the surface antibodies second, HB, SAB. Um, and this will happen. Sometimes it takes six months, sometimes it takes nine months, um, but we want to keep positive and wait for that to happen. And e, that's what we're working towards. And help ourselves with the right diet, avoiding sleepless nights, avoiding toxins, paracetamol. Do not live on it for the six months. It will slow down your recovery. Um, alcohol <coughs> is the same thing. The weight can be a big worry. But always remember, 19 out of 20 adults clear. And the ones that don't, they have other issues that are, are of a concern to us. And that's it. That's what we want to say about acute hepatitis B. Um, in closing, I just want to really recommend to people, do not jump about using all sorts of medications. Do not think, oh, I must use medications. This is a bit dangerous. You're interfering with your natural process of clearing the virus. And then if you are an exceptional case, um, perhaps you know, you, you've got chemotherapy that you, you've got to do during an acute phase, always uh, balance things. If you have something like cancer that must be treated, then you've got to accept that and not be concerned so much about the hep B. Stay alive today. Or we can always use medications for hep B to keep it controlled for the rest of your life. Um, and so these are thoughts about hep B. Stay calm, stay clear. Thanks very much indeed.